Welcome to another episode of Police Beat, the show that takes you inside the Gainesville Police Department. I'm Officer Ben Tobias, the spokesman for GPD, and I'll be your host for today's show. Sergeant Sin couldn't join us this month, so sitting in for her is a familiar Police Beat face, Detective Matt Geckel, who works in our Fraud and Financial Crimes Division. It's that time of year again. The holidays are upon us, and we're glad you decided to spend some of your holiday time with Police Beat. On today's episode, we talk about traffic enforcement and show you some great tips on how to stay safe this holiday season. Then, we'll finish the show with one of our favorite activities, our officers Christmas shopping with local elementary students. On our first segment, we talk about a topic that is usually the first thing folks think about when they see an officer on the road being stopped for speeding. The Gainesville Police Department actively enforces the traffic laws in Gainesville to keep our town safe for all drivers. Our traffic safety team generally works areas that are prone to vehicle crashes. You've seen Officer Frank Zaskowski on the program before. He's the person that trains our motorcycle officers. We recently followed Officer Zaskowski on an afternoon on his motorcycle to see how and why he targets speeding vehicles. Well, we're out here today to enforce traffic, uh, primarily speeding, especially along Southwest 16th Avenue, uh, about the 1800 block where we are right now. This roadway is uh, 35 miles an hour and typically you see speeds as high as uh, 50, 55 uh, quite often on this roadway. 52 on the van, it's changing lanes right now. Uh, we've got a lot of bicyclists, a lot of pedestrians, and sometimes drivers, uh, especially with tech, you know, texting and all that stuff these days, what they do and not realize is that any distraction can cause them not to see a pedestrian or bicyclist. Uh, in the area, and it caused, uh, there's actually uh, quite a number of pedestrian related crashes, bikes and stuff. The faster you go, the longer your vehicle is going to travel before you react to, say, something that comes up in, in the roadway or even on the sidewalk or crosswalk, and the longer it's going to take your vehicle to stop as well. So all that adds up and increased stopping distances, the lack of awareness there, you know, where all the phones and the texting going on. Uh, while people are driving. Um, and, and, and anything that takes your vehicle longer to slow down or takes you longer to react uh, is, is bad, and also the, uh, the increased speeds would be bad. The speed limits are set by the state and uh, local you know, authorities. What they do, uh, they, they do surveys and stuff to determine the proper speed limit for the area, and they take into account not only vehicles, but pedestrian, uh, bicycle, traffic, and also right visibility okay. from a uh, driving standpoint. I like the motorcycle for traffic enforcement for several different reasons. One, uh, it's easy to conceal. Um, we can go places where vehicles can't sit, um, such as under under trees, uh, easements, things like that. Um, and we're, we're not as visible immediately to drivers, not really looking for the motorcycles. Um, it's, it's real convenient. We can turn around real quickly if we have to. Uh, we can get in and out of traffic real quickly with the vehicle if we have to. I like riding. Well, a lot of people don't understand how a laser works. There's a difference between a radar and a laser. And the laser, it works by sight only. It's a handheld device, which is this device right here. This is a uh, ultralight uh, made by Laser Tech. And what it does is it sends a signal out this antenna in the front, this glass lens, and it's received by this antenna on the bottom, this lens, after it's reflected off of the vehicle that I'm aiming the device at. With a laser, I can measure one vehicle at a time only, it only takes that laser a third of a second to acquire and display speed. The laser, especially the LTI, has a, a sight glass, which I looked through. It's a two power scope on this one. Um, it, it has a red dot, needs to be focused on the front bumper portion of a vehicle for me to measure speed. By the time uh, the driver sees me and they see my lights turn on and pull out, I've already got their speed well before they've got to where I am. And they look down at their speedometers and they see what they see when they let off the gas. Because natural instinct, if you see an officer, you're going to uh, slow down and become more aware of your surroundings. Um, that's, that's the visibility standpoint. Good afternoon. Hi. I stopped you for speeding today. Do you have your license with you? Oh, I was speeding. You have, when you made your lane change, you got up to 52. The speed up was 35. I'm still When you made your lane change, yes, ma'am? Wow. A lot of people don't understand that. We get their speed when they probably don't even realize that we're there. So our motorcycle is equipped with a Stalker brand, uh, dual antenna, moving radar. The radar is mounted to the motorcycle. That means that using a controller that's mounted on top of the gas tank, I can activate the front radar and measure vehicles coming and going from my standpoint as I ride down the road. And that's called running moving radar. 
After you, as you're approaching me, I can measure your vehicle speed. It displays my patrol speed in addition to the target, which is the vehicles that are approaching me. Now, radar is a little different. I've got to, I've got to, as an operator, pick out the vehicles in the pack that are that, that are the violators, and we do that by visually estimating and then confirming that with the instrument itself. The rear antenna, if you pass by me, and I want to measure your speed as you're riding or driving away from me, I can also do that. I can change the antenna to the rear antenna and then get a reading that way. And most times what happens then is uh, I, I break my speed down, I do a U-turn when it's safe to do so, and I go back after your vehicle and stop it. The average speed on this road on Southwest 16th Avenue today was probably about 40 miles per hour, uh, 45 miles an hour is about the average. Um, anything higher than 48, I was stopping. I think that's a, a very gracious uh, leeway there. Um, you know, that's, that's 13 over. Um, every officer is different. Every officer would choose to stop at different speeds in different areas. Some might, not, might wait until 15, 16. Some might be more strict and do nine or 10. Well, the, the speed limit's the limit. It's not a suggestion, okay? The speed limit is, is what the, the lawmakers have set for this roadway under clear conditions with good line of sight. It doesn't take into account rain, fog, darkness, uh, heavy traffic, pedestrians in the area. That's with a clear line of sight on a good roadway, 35 miles per hour, is the maximum that you're by law allowed to travel on this roadway. I'm allowing up to 13 miles an hour over that before I even stop you and issue citations for speed. A lot more traffic, uh, pedestrian and vehicle-wise, on the road during the holiday season. We have uh, increased our enforcement efforts uh, through the holidays, uh, not, not only for vehicles, uh, but also for security in different areas around town, uh, the holiday shopping areas. But we are out there aggressively enforcing traffic just as we have all the other months of the year. Just because it's December doesn't mean we give really uh, any, any more leeway to our drivers than we normally would otherwise. We hope the last segment answers some of your questions and misconceptions about traffic enforcement. After the break, we'll talk about how to stay safe during this holiday season. Don't go anywhere. Police people will be right back. It's after midnight. Most likely you're asleep, safe in your home. Somebody is there watching out for you. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The Gainesville Police Department is on patrol. Report a suspect attempting to enter residence. Go ahead, three on the ground. The Gainesville Police Department. When you need us, we're there. Welcome back to Police Beat. We know that some of you are still rushing to get your holiday shopping complete so you can have that perfect time with your friends and family. While you're out shopping this holiday season, criminals are out shopping also. They are shopping out of your cars and out of your homes. Gainesville police officers are out looking for these Grinches before they can ruin your perfect holiday, but there are plenty of things you can do to avoid becoming the victim of crime. The easiest way to prevent crime is to simply know it's there. Stay one step ahead of the Grinch and they will move on to the next target. This is a time that should be filled with happy memories and not with memories of being the victim of a crime. We hope that you're taking these extra safety precautions unfortunately needed this time of year. Our next segment will give you some ideas on how to keep your holidays a safe and happy time. Give me a bet. Holidays are rolling in right now. A lot of people are getting out, doing a lot of shopping, buying gifts for friends and loved ones. A lot of opportunity to find things that you want. However, thieves also have the opportunity to take those things from your friends and loved ones as well. A lot of people are staying in town for, for the holidays. Gainesville's their home. But we have a lot of people in Gainesville that are gonna be traveling out of town. the place. 
if you're getting mail and you're going to be gone for a long time, you may want to call to have your mail halted or delivered to an alternate address. All right, let's make this simple. We're going to make it a smash and grab. Dude, where's your mask? You didn't tell me not to have one. We're robbing a place. You gotta have a mask. There are two theories to robbing a place. One is to break in. Two, you gotta blend in. It's the holidays, man. Make sure that there aren't things available for thieves to access your house, or that there aren't things outside that are telling the thief that there's things inside that they're gonna want. There's a key. Trust your neighbors. Sometimes your neighbors are going to be people that you can reach out to to keep an eye on your house. Remember, crime watches were made for that very purpose. I'm on lookout. Other things that you want to do, social media is great. We get to communicate with a lot of our friends in a different format. Unfortunately, too many people put too much information in social media. All right, I got it. 70 inch flat screen. Let's break this bad boy in after exams. Case in point, if you say you get that nice large screen television before the holidays, you don't want to say that you're leaving. You don't want to give your itinerary out and you don't want to say when you'll be back. Going to go crank out this exam, be back for the party at 7. Peace. Those are things that these can use to know just how much time they have in your home. Hey, bros. Sad day. Party's canceled. TV got jacked. No matter how careful you check your home, sometimes thieves will break in. One thing we want you to remember is when you come back and you find your home broken into, do not go into the house immediately. That's the time to call 911. Let the police arrive and we'll search the house. So while we're shopping, say you're at a very large shopping area, Thieves tend to patrol the parking lot just like a police officer would patrol looking for thieves. What they're looking for is they're looking for people who are very encumbered with a lot of gifts in their hands. They know that that person isn't able to pay attention as well as somebody that has a small amount of gifts in their hands. Hey honey, I'm out. Yeah, I got him, I got him. You, you said three. Well, she's not gonna care anyway. She's four years old. She can't even... They're gonna watch you all the way to your car. That's a very critical time for people because you're very vulnerable at that point. If a thief is gonna actually try to take something from you, that'll be the time they'll do it. But most likely, they'll rather watch you to see what you're gonna do. I've been shopping for five hours. I really don't wanna go back in there. Keep in mind that thieves are out there and they're watching all of us to see if we're gonna make a mistake. Look, I don't care if your mother-in-law's coming into town. I'm the one who has to put up with it. You're going to be at work the whole time, and I'm going to deal with it. Fine. I'll tell you what. I'll put all the stuff in the car, and I'll go back in there. Are you happy? Good. Well, I hope you have dinner ready, because it's going to be like midnight before I get home. All right. Love you, too. Bye. When you get your gifts, the best place to put them is in the trunk, where no one can see them. We understand that it's Christmas time and people are buying a lot of gifts, so you're going to naturally overflow inside your car. Try to keep them low and out of sight so that thieves can't see them. I wasn't supposed to shop today. I was supposed to go home. If you pile your gifts up in your car, a lot of times you can't even get your car to lock because you'll hit the button and you think that it's locked and then you go to buy more gifts. That's when the thief strikes. They're going to start checking doors. They'll watch for people that are very careless with their vehicle. Merry Christmas to me. As you're going to your car, actually scan the parking lot. See if there's anyone sitting in their vehicle or just kind of lurking around in the parking lot. Those are potential thieves. The holidays are a great time. It's a lot of joy, and we get to hang out with people that we may not get to hang out with for a while. Sometimes you'll go shopping with your friend. You guys get caught up in conversation. 
and that time you don't pay attention to the things going on around you so much. We have to remember to remain vigilant because thieves are out there and they're looking for us to make mistakes. If you feel like you have to walk down a dark alley and you get a feeling in your gut saying don't go down there, learn to trust that. Those are your instincts. They've been given to us to keep us safe. If you're walking down a dark alley and you see somebody that looks suspicious, that's an indicator. That person may be a suspect, they may be somebody that's there to do you harm. Walk in a different direction. Trust your instincts, folks. They're there to keep you safe. Thieves like to jump out from behind objects. So let's say that you absolutely have to walk down that alley and that suspicious person jumps out and turns out they are a robber. What do you do then? Give me a pen. That's a very terrifying situation. One, do what the person asks. If they want your money, give it away quickly. Those things are frivolous, you can get more money. Try to stay as calm as possible and call 911. Do your best to remember what the suspect looked like. Start from head to toe. Remember the things that they say because that person may do other robberies in other locations and are asking for the same things. That helps us tie things together and also gives us a location on where that person may be we got to keep in mind that bad things can still happen. Stay vigilant. Remember, crime prevention is everybody's job. Don't ever forget that there are criminals out there that want to ruin your holiday spirit. Gainesville police officers are out on extra patrol during this season, but we can't be everywhere at once, so make sure you're staying safe. After the commercial, we take a break from all police calls and show you one of our favorite times of year, when we get to take elementary kids Christmas shopping. Stay with us. Police Beat will be right back. Burglars and robberies have become serious concerns in our city. This crime is referred to as a crime of opportunity because most criminals look for the path of least resistance. Protect yourself, don't become a target, lock your doors, and keep expensive items out of plain view. For crime prevention information, go to GainesvillePD.org or call the Gainesville Police Department's Crime Prevention Office at 334-2479. Protect yourself, don't become a target. This time of year has plenty of opportunities for the Gainesville Police Department to give back to the community. One of our favorite events each year is the Heroes and Helpers shopping event with Target. Last year, 39 local elementary students were chosen based on merit or need to participate in the program. The students were picked up from school by a uniformed GPD officer in a police vehicle, then taken to lunch provided by Beef O'Brady's. After lunch, the students hopped back into the police cars, which drove to Target in a motorcade of 39 police vehicles, complete with flashing lights and sirens. Once at the store, each student was given a gift card with $100 to purchase anything they wanted. Many of the students selected items for their families even before choosing something for themselves. The funds were raised by Target, GPD employees, and members of the local community. When the total cost went over the allotted $100, officers reached into their own wallets to cover the overage. This is just one of the many ways we enjoy giving back to the community. We hope that you smile watching this just as much as the officers and kids smiled during the event. You ready to go to the Heroes and Helpers? I am so ready. Let's go. I'm we're going to go, go to Rollins and pick up our girls. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So this morning we're going to go pick up our two girls that have been selected by their school to attend this event. Who are you? Anaya? Anaya, I'm Wendy. You're going to be shopping with me. I'm sorry already. You see how silly she is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> so who are you? I'm Izzy. So you're, okay, so you're mine. So we're going to have the best right here. There we go. We are going to meet the rest of the officers and children from around the city at Beef O'Brady's. <laughs> Are you guys hungry? Yeah. Let's go! You've been good all year? At home too? Do you keep your room clean? Because if you do, I need you to tell me how to make my kid do that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Once we are all at Beef O'Brady's, they have an area dedicated just to us. They make the children feel special. They can drink all the coke they want. They can eat from the buffet. So 
So once we all get to eat, then we all meet up outside and we head to Target. That's what the, the kids love the most. I have to tell you, they are so excited because they don't really know how much they get, but all they know is they get to go into a giant toy store and pick out whatever they want. Target will have a whole assembly line of employees out that are clapping, the kids are happy, everybody's happy, and then they let them go in the store and you should see it, it, it smiles a mile wide. It's our third annual Heroes and Helpers event and it's growing every year. We're up from 23 last year to 39 kids coming in and, and hopefully having a great Christmas as a result of the partnership that we have with Gainesville Police Department. So a really exciting event. We love being a part of it. Um, we love being able to open our doors and allow these kids to come in and shop and it's really great seeing them. Not only do they shop for themselves but they're also shopping for their families and friends and they, they look for items. You know you really see how the true Christmas spirit is here uh, during this time of year. So we enjoy hosting it every year. What did we get? What'd you get? I got this baby doll for my sister. Oh, you got that for your sister? Very good. Now what you got up in this thing right here? What is that? The trucks, oh, trucks, the trucks. trucks. Yeah, you know, one of the amazing things is, is our guests that actually shop here. Um, this year we actually promoted it, we had signage up uh, talking about the event, but a lot of them don't realize what's going on until they're here. So each year it's great, we get guests that just come in and, and a free will just donate money to, to help out with the event, and so uh, we use that for kids that might be over a little bit and, and kind of use those funds to help top off everybody's Christmas list. So it's really great to see our guests even get involved during this time of year. We've got this. So, is this one for you or your sister? Sister. This one's for you? Or who's this for? Cousin. Oh, you don't have anything for you yet? No. So what are you gonna go for, for you? I don't know. It's me. It's, you gotta get something for you. We had a lot of fun, and we're on our way to go get some ice cream. You ready to go get some ice cream? This year we are happy to have Walmart on board also and we will have a total of 60 elementary school children participating. Thanks to all of the donors that have helped make this program a reality. Well that wraps up this month on Police Beat. Make sure to follow GPD on Facebook or Twitter or connect with us at GainesvillePD.org where you can make suggestions on what you'd like to see featured on a future episode. We love taking your suggestions and putting them on air, so please let us know what parts of GPD you want to see. We hope each and every one of you has a very happy holiday season, however you celebrate. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next month for another episode of Police Beat. So sitting in for her is a familiar Police Beat face. You changed it back to the amazing and handsome Detective Matt Geckel, seriously? I need some chapstick. Give me a second. <laughs> it's welcome, is the first. Burglars and robberies have become serious concerns in our city. This crime is referred to as a crime of opportunity because most criminals look for the path of least resistance. Protect yourself, don't become a target, lock your doors, and keep expensive items out of plain view. For crime prevention information, go to GainesvillePD.org or call the Gainesville Police Department's Crime Prevention Office at 334-2479. Protect yourself. Don't become a target.